Hey, what's up everyone? It's Serge and welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to keep this introduction really short because I have a feeling this is going to be kind of a long video. But anyway, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I built my custom test bench with an old PC case that I got from Craigslist, luckily for free. So I actually started taking this case apart before I actually decided to film it. Um, so I don't even know what this case is. It's an old Cooler Master case. Maybe you guys might know. Leave it in the comments section below if you guys do know. I would like to know. So for this project, I took a bunch of tools to the case. I, I took an angle grinder, uh, a Dremel, um, drill gun, and uh, some rivets and riveting gun. It wasn't the easiest project to do. However, it was a lot of fun. And I understand there's like a billion already on YouTube of uh, custom test benches, but what the hell, here's one more. I started off by drilling out all the rivet points on the case, keeping all the main panels intact. Oh, and here's a face panel in case any of you were interested. Luckily, there was an independent motherboard tray, so I just measured out the length and width I wanted to keep with the Sharpie and a ruler. I then followed my lines with the Dremel with the grinding tip to remove the parts I didn't need. Remember to grind down all your sharp edges so you don't accidentally cut yourself. I also cut out a few holes on the motherboard tray for cable routing. For the power supply mount, I measured out the rear screw layout of a standard ATX power supply on a piece of paper. Then I used a sharp nail to etch the pattern onto the roof panel. I also left a small flat portion to be folded down later for a rivet point. This piece will also be structural support for the bench. The Dremel was taking way too long so I started using an angle grinder instead. These extra tabs I'm cutting off here are so I can make my fold for the rivet point. Next, I took one of the side panels of the case, measured out the same length and width I wanted to be parallel with my motherboard tray, and grinded off the extra pieces. That line near the handle of the door will actually be a folding point to make my front panel. I then had to remove a small portion of the reinforcement ridge to allow room for my fold. I scored the line where my fold was going to happen to make sure my fold was going to be straight and to follow a single path. Remember not to cut all the way through the panel. I heated up the panel with a heat gun to soften the metal a bit, making the metal easier to bend. I then carefully bent the panel downwards on a sharp surface to get a straight line. And yes, the metal was really hot. I finished up my bend with a quick massage with a rubber mallet. Luckily, the case also came with an independent I.O. shield and GPU bracket. I just had to grind off the extra tabs where the plastic clips used to be. Next, I drilled out a couple of holes for my power and reset buttons. Unfortunately, I drilled one of the holes a little larger than the other, but no biggie. I just cut another piece from all the extra metal and tried again. A little bit of epoxy and it was all good, and adds a bit of dimension to the front panel. Using one of the roof brackets, I made an extra support bracket which will be opposite of the power supply unit. After drilling out a few holes for some drives and some rivets, and final smoothing of rough areas, the parts were all ready to be painted. I then applied two coats of flat black barbecue grill paint. I later realized the paint I used scratched and flaked off too easily so I went over it again with an enamel type paint. I let the paint dry for a few days to make sure it was fully cured. Next, the fun part. I placed rivets in the holes I made and secured them with a rivet gun.
Make sure you work your way from the inside out so you don't work yourself into a situation where you can't reach a rivet point. I used the front panel wires that came with the case and spliced them to new switches that I had laying around. You can also order some cheap momentary switches from eBay or pick some up from your local hardware shop or auto shop. I then twisted them together and sealed them off with some heat shrink. Then I installed my new switches on the case. The last thing I had to do was replace the standoffs and the chassis was done. I also purchased some adhesive rubber feet from eBay for the bottom of the case, but I forgot to record that part. Oops. Overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It's really small and compact compared to other benches, but it still supports a decent amount of components. So that will be it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. I hope it wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer them or I'll try to clarify them. So stay tuned for the next video guys because we're going to actually be putting a system in this thing which is the fun part and I hope that you will all join me again. Take it easy everyone and I'll see you guys later.